Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and in this video we're going to be looking at the Atomic Step Motor module. It can control step motors. So what is a step motor or stepper motor? They come in all shapes and sizes and what's special about stepper motors is they have very precise control over the motor shaft being able to control it in fractions of an angle. So they're very good for use in 3D printers and CNC machines where high precision accuracy is required. In this video, we'll show how you can control a stepper motor with this module, what the stock programs do, and what else we could control it to do. Let's take a look. As I mentioned earlier, stepper motors come in all shapes and sizes, and often some have more wires than others. So are all steppers equal? Let's take a look. Stepper motors are usually in one of two categories, unipolar and bipolar stepper motors. Unipolar steppers tend to have a lot more wires, as each coil has more than two wires. Bipolar stepper motors generally only have four wires, two wires attached to each coil. So all we need to do is find two pairs. How can we do that? This is the stepper motor I'll be using today, a bipolar stepper that I pulled out of an old Epson printer scanner combo. Aside from this, we'll also need an LED for testing. Any LED will do as long as it has two legs. We can generate electricity by spinning the shaft of the motor. Try inserting the LED in different positions and orientations until it lights up. Once it lights up, we know we found a pair attached to a coil. And also we'll know which is a negative and which is a positive wire by tracing the anode and cathode of the LED. Be sure to make a note of your findings as we'll need these later. Most bigger steppers will require at least 12 volts of power, therefore we'll need an external power source. I'll be using this 12 volt power supply from an old stereo. It has a barrel jack on the end. Therefore all I'll need to do is solder two wires to the negative and positive terminals of this barrel jack connector. Now we'll need to remove the casing of the atomic stepper module. This can be a little bit tricky, but I've found the best way is to use a thin object like tweezers and then use your nail on the side to pry this part of the casing away. Now the screw terminals are exposed, we can loosen the two channels on the left hand side to insert the barrel jack connector. Make sure to properly install the barrel jack connector according to the sticker. Ground is the furthest left. Now we can attach the positive and negative of each coil to the device. I'll be using jumper cables as I don't want to damage this connector on the end of my stepper motor. With the stock firmware of the device, once we attach a USB, you'll see the LED blinking red. This is simply to notify us that we need to connect an external power source. So once I connect the barrel jack adapter, we can see both LEDs light up. Then once we press the button, we can see the motor first rotate counterclockwise and then clockwise. You may have noticed that there's a trim pot on the device. If we take our screwdriver and slowly rotate this, we'll see a change in speed. This trim pot controls the current. If we turn it all the way to the left, the step motor will stop as there is no current flowing through. All the way to the right will give us 1.2 amps of current. Now we can see that everything is working, let's get to programming it. First make sure you flash your Atom Light device with the latest UIFlow firmware. An example UIFlow program for the Atomic Stepper module can be downloaded from its documents page. This program will spin the motor at a fixed rate and allows you to change the rotation of the motor with the double press of the button. But I wanted more control over the speed than this. So let's go about making another UI flow program. First, we'll get a digital write block from the EZIO section. We'll need to make sure that it's set to pin 22, which is the enable pin, and its value is set to zero. If set to one, the motor won't move. 
Next, we need to initialize the ADC or analog to digital converter. If we refer to the sticker on the device, we can see that this is pin 33. Now we can set the sampling rate so we have maximum resolution and also set the attenuation to the maximum setting. Next we'll initialize the PWN pin in pin 19. If we set the frequency here to a low frequency, the motor will move slow. The higher the frequency, the faster the motor will move. The duty cycle we can just leave at 50 for now. Now in order to control the speed of the motor, I want to use an angle sensor or potentiometer. I can add this from the units. Since we only have one growth port in the Atom, just leave this as A and click OK. Now let's create a variable to hold the value of the angle sensor. Place this set variable block inside the loop. Now we'll need to go into the EasyIO section to find the map. The map block allows us to get the range of the angle sensor and then map it to a range of frequencies for controlling the speed of the motor. We'll set the frequencies from between 1000 to 12000. Now all we need to do is get the PWM block set frequency and then apply the variable that we just created into the block. Now we can run this and see the result. We can see as we adjust the potentiometer, the speed of the stepper motor increases and decreases. On a side note, it's possible to adjust the micro-stepping of the atomic stepper module. Below where the atom light device sits, there is a dip switch. You'll notice if I flick off this first switch, there is a noted difference in speed, but the motor is clearly skipping some steps. You can adjust this dip switch depending on whether you want higher accuracy or speed. That's about all we have time for in our video today. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you have any ideas for projects with stepper motors, don't forget to leave them down in the comments. As always, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.